curled it uh, behind the keeper. Yeah, that, that was nice. Mbappé. I stay a bit with Dusan. Now I'm back. I'm back on the pitch and I'm happy. Ciao, Juventini of the world. My name is Giuseppe. Welcome back on the channel. As you saw in the intro, Federico Chiesa was with me for 35 minutes yesterday. Fantastic interview about him, about the documentary Back on Track. It was just simply a dream. 35 minutes sharing with maybe the one that we love the most at Juventus, actually. Federico Chiesa was fantastic. Lot and a big part in Italian, but also parts in English, because yes, Federico Chiesa speaks English and really, really well. So in that video, what I will do, because I didn't see a lot of translation online, I will translate the part where he spoke in Italian and I will give you live footage of what he said in English because yes, a lot has been said in English, like for example, his favorite goal or what he's doing after the training session together with Dusan Vlaovic which will remain on the channel because it's a nice one. Before starting, I really, really wanted to say that after the live yesterday, I wanted to go live on this channel to share with you the emotions of being live with Federico Chiesa, sharing these 35 minutes, but it was impossible for me. Uh, I was really emotional because it's a dream that came true. Uh, the first thing that came into my mind was sharing these moments with my family, with my son, with my wife, that I have always been since day one there to support me. And guys, it's not easy because, you know, I'm not living in a studio. So they are doing a lot of sacrifices to give me the allowing to do my passion. It is Juve. But also understanding that after three years, I kept one of the promises that one day I would be able on this channel to bring you a first team player that was speaking in English. Okay, it is not live on this channel. It's taken from Juventus, but it's maybe even better because thanks to you guys, and that's the second people I want to thank after my family, you, uh, you, made, you made it come true because I'm working for Juve today. I have more opportunities today. And this all in three years, all in three years, it was just simply fantastic. The, all the sacrifices done, they are paying off. And, uh, and that was really, really beautiful. Having the trust from Juventus to lead and to host a live like yesterday and having and capturing these moments of Federico Chiesa that in a certain part was extremely natural with a fantastic love and so on. It was beautiful. So guys, if you want to, to continue to grow that channel and maybe one day having Federico Chiesa or another player, I already spoke with Fagioli, with Marchisio, with Bardagli, with Ravanelli, with Torricelli. Maybe one day having whoever you want here on the channel, Dai, one thing you have to do, liking the video, subscribing in the channel if you didn't yet. And now we start. We start with a question to ask to Federico Chiesa. Yesterday we started with um, a welcome, of course, in Italian, in English. And then we focused on back on track. Back on track was yesterday launched globally after being launched in Italy, just in Italian. Yesterday, Since yesterday, you are able to watch it on Amazon Prime in Italian with all the subtitles from your own country, French, English, Spanish, whatever you want to. Go and watch it. I don't want to spoil too much in that video, so be reassured I will not spoil too much. But we asked him what and how. What was the reaction of Federico Chiesa when Juventus told him, you know what, you're injured, but we want to follow you. We want to make an Amazon Prime series of 1 hour 20. Do you, do you allow us to do it? Well, in, initially, the goal was not to do an Amazon Prime video of 1 hour 30. It was to do some segments all in his process of recovering and put it on YouTube with like small videos. But at the end, it became a really long one involving the family, the girlfriend. He was really speaking about, it's not only a recovery that we are showing on the video, but also a bit of my private life. And he said, I appreciated what they wanted to do. So I said, absolutely, yes. We were asking him about um, the contact because at a certain moment in the documentary, he says that he's absolutely not, not angry with anybody. Absolutely not with Smalling. He said that he had a lot more harsh contact in his career, that some people fault him even worse than the tackle of Smalling, but that at the end, Smalling, he went on the ball. And as the mother of Federico Chiesa told him after the injury, he said, what were you expecting? 
What were you expecting? It is a contact sport. It happens. And so he accepted it quite well. And also in the documentary, you know, they are saying that recovering is 70% in your head. It's mental. And that's what he was explaining yesterday with a really beautiful message of not being angry, not trying to find a scapegoat, accepting as fast as possible and trying to think positive. That was really beautiful from him. Did he watch the documentary? Well, he said, look, I lived it in first real person, but I watched it twice. That was a really beautiful moment. Uh, he continued to speak uh, on uh, the questions about was he scared about the injury after coming back and he said look when i was starting to train in the beginning the first training session of course i was really thinking about it i was really scared but then with the continuity my fears went away he also thought about all the people that were not as fortunate as him because that was beautiful in the words of federico chiesa yesterday he was yes saying i had bad luck with that big injury but in my bad luck I saw the positive I was lucky to be in a top club like Juventus that from the first instance of the impact until my recovery when I entered the field versus Paris Saint-Germain they have always been next to me and I'm thinking about the players that are playing in minor leagues or in amateurial leagues that do not have the opportunity to be followed day and night so I'm really thinking about them and that was also beautiful showing altruism not being selfish but thinking also about the other ones sharing that was fantastic what about the fans i asked him federico we saw at a certain moment of your recovery phase about you walking on instagram the first step and we had like tears in our eyes when watching it did you read the messages of the fans did you see the support of all of us being happy and did that help you and he said yes absolutely i saw them i was super held by that that motivated me even more i believe that I deserve the love of the fans because of what I showed on the field, but it's still helping me today. The support and the love of the fans is giving me that boost, that extra boost, and that was a beautiful one. Speaking also about Giorgio Chiellini, but also Bonucci, uh, players that had these big injuries that were next to him, Matthias de Ligt spoke with him. A lot of people uh, that he mentioned in that video that were there to help him all during that process, and he said it was beautiful to have examples, even if, Every single injury is different, person per person. We spoke then about the other question than the documentary, so go and watch it, because guys, it is available and it is fantastic. Also, kudos to Juventus with a fantastic production. Amazon Prime Juventus did a fantastic job. It was the first real production at home from Juve, and I have to say, big, big, big congratulations. We can be proud of doing that. Anyway, we go to his... Uh, personal questions from the chat idols when he was a kid he spoke about his first idol that was Kaka he said Kaka has always been one of my favorite players what about today he said adesso per me il giocatore eh, non che mi ispiro però che, che mi piace di più guardare è Mbappé Mbappé Mbappé, fantastic player. We changed shirt and that shirt, I put it, I framed it and I put it on the wall. He was showing, I couldn't, we couldn't see it because he had to turn the camera. But he said, you know, that uh, there is a place in his home for Mbappé. There was my colleague Leandro from uh, Average Juventino guys that told him, you know, when you're running you against him, you are quite uh, in balance. He said, absolutely not. Mbappé is a phenomenon. He's much faster than me also with the ball on his feet. And guys, when you're 23, you are able to to score a hat-trick in a World Cup final. Guys, you are a phenomenal. So beautiful words there. I asked him about the number seven because in the Back on Track documentary, he's saying why he changed from the 22 to, the number se to another number, to a number seven. He's explaining why, so I will not spoil it. But the number seven, was it so important for him? He said, no, actually not really the number seven, but I really wanted an important number. And what is an important number for me? Between one and 11. Federico Chiesa is like me. He's exactly like me. He loves the numbers 1 to 11. Then he said, when Dushan, I was speaking with him, I told him, will you take the number 9? Because then I won the number 7. Then he said, the number 7 is already in the history of Juventus with big players, but it's also... But the 7 is Juventus, which has been endorsed by Cristiano Ronaldo. 
the number seven, the shirt that a certain top five player legend of history was wearing at Juventus. And we are speaking about Cristiano Ronaldo. That was really beautiful. Speaking about the Ballon d'Or, because some fans have that picture of Federico Chiesa with the Ballon d'Or, you know, that Photoshop picture. And that's where he said something extremely important. He said, look, about that Ballon d'Or, whatever, it's nice, thank you great question, whatever you want it, but I really want to win a trophy with Juventus this year, especially with everything was happening, referring to the minus 15, referring to everything, he said, I want to win a trophy with Juventus, that would be really special, and that's also showing another time how altruist Federico Chiesa is, and not thinking about himself, um, I spoke about his favorite goal, Federico from the chat, what is your favorite goal that you scored with Juventus? Ooh. Uh, that's a nice one, actually. I guess I like the one I scored uh, against Atalanta and I scored like from outside of the box, uh, like curled it uh, behind the keeper. Yeah, that, that was nice. And also I like the one against Porto, eh. the, 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 the second one. The Il header. Giro, giro. No, 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 the header. I like oh. the header because usually I don't score with my head. So, and and to score with my head in the Champions League, uh, in 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 that kind of game uh, was awesome. So I have, I have these two, but I, I you know I, I picked the one against Atalanta because because I mean uh, people like it more outside of you know to to score a goal outside of the box is always better. But I like the other. I would have mentioned personally also the one versus Milan that. Federico Chiesa, Dybala, Dybala, Federico Chiesa was a fantastic goal. There were other beautiful goals of Federico Chiesa. He has chosen for them. Well, they are really extremely beautiful. I asked him also about his uh, uh, decision-making, about going with the left, with the right, or with the header. And he told me about taking quick decision. But a nice one was telling me, you have to train. You have to train, train since a kid with the two feet. Not only the right, not only the left, to become even better, to improve on your preferred one but going and training 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 so also if your father was a footballer or whatever you have to train your skills and then he spoke about a really nice challenge with Dusan Vlaovic listen to that one after training I stay a bit with Dusan and we <laughs> you know we have a little bit of games you know and uh, we like to come at each other you know and uh, la la <laughs> three days uh, three days ago yeah yeah three days ago I think I won a competition we had this game, little game. I scored uh, out of five. Sc I scored three. He scored one. So, <laughs> so I won last time. So, <laughs> but but it will it will like next time I know he will come at me. He will take so, revenge. Yeah, 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 it will take his revenge for sure. We also spoke about his favorite moment of football with Juventus. Well, he said favorite or at least the most important game he played. He said the one versus Porto because. For him, for Federico Chiesa, it was important believing in that remontada. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. So it's still here for him. It's still annoying. In If we are speaking about the beautiful moment, important, beautiful moment of Juventus, he said, well, winning the Coppa Italia versus Atalanta, also scoring in that final was super important for him. So that was Federico Chiesa, 35 minutes uh, together with, uh, with me on the channel. I was sincerely impressed by uh, the kindness of Federico Chiesa about his level of English, about the, the switch of language, you know, like on the field when he's switching bef between the right and the left foot, he was able to do it also during the life between the two languages. With Federico Chiesa, if you already loved him, I believe there are reasons more to love him. Thank you again for every single second that you support me. Guys, I continue to say it, if you want, maximum of like continue to subscribe to the channel grazie and let's believe in the dream because like uh, ex-president of juve andrea agnelli said you know yesterday what you won is beautiful but it's the past but we have to focus on the next objectives if you are still there let me know which should be my next dreams to conquer grazie forza juve <laughs>